All right, <clears throat> we're gonna go through installing the May internal microphone. Uh, I chose for the Toms, the Audix D4. There's not a D2 option on the May website, or I probably would have picked that at least for my eight and 10. Uh, but I just did the 12 inch just to see how it works. You can kind of see there's the plug there on the side and I'm about to go through the 13. There's the May stuff with the mic, the internal mount, the air hole vent cabling, and the uh, inside mount to connect this to the shell of the drum. Uh, and just need a screwdriver, and it comes with the Allen wrenches you need, which is kind of nice. I also decided while I'm in there that I'm gonna be removing the uh, badge because uh, you can see where I did it there maybe there's the hole yep uh because i don't really like the star classic badges love the drums don't like the badges and i think the finish is cool enough where nothing needs to get in the way all right so next step got to take off the head still have the stock head on it uh so might as well throw a new one on it while i'm at it okay i've got the drum head off here's the interior of the drum now, a couple things you need to think about, about these uh, internal mics, which I didn't, is I knew it mounted to one of the lug screws inside, but if you have small lugs, like these Star Classics have, they're gonna be pretty close to the edge of the drum. So then your options are to put it here, which is if you stick it at a 90 degree angle, at least with these microphones, uh, it actually sticks up above the rim, so you would you know, be striking them. Um, but if you put it down here, that seems a little too far down. So I ended up in the last one putting it here and at a 45 degree angle, so it actually sits like this, and I think that should work fine. A um, Couple other things to consider. The vent mounting, which is what this is, it mounts to the vent hole, and that's where you plug in the microphone and it also allows you to vent at the top uh, but you have to figure out is it going to fit through the vent hole so these star classics have these sort of fancy looking vent holes which are actually too small to allow the mount to slide through fortunately fortunately uh, these also remove quite easy he said the last one was loose but it just has a burled knob there you unscrew it and it comes out. I'll show you that once I get it out of there. Okay, so back to the vent hole mounting. I've uh, taken the parts out of the package. So this is the vent hole mic connection mount uh, with the cabling that goes inside. This is the inside mount that mounts to the lug screw uh, that then this mounts to. Uh, there's a couple cable ties for cable management inside the drum and a couple washers. Uh, to isolate things. Uh, so like I mentioned before, in this case, uh, I'll unwrap these. This probably would have been easier if I had two hands to not have to hold the camera. So this mount doesn't fit, I found this out with the last one, through the vent hole. So I need to remove the vent hole fancy sleeve that these come with. I bet it fits most standard vent holes. So like I mentioned before, this one fortunately removes easily with, it has this burled knob. Uh, burled knob, by the way, was my nickname in high school. Uh, and you just, in this case, unscrew it and then pop it out a little bit. And now I've got the vent hole available for this guy. All right, so the vent hole came with this wing nut uh, that secures it on the inside. So obviously first you have to take that and the one washer that comes with it off because it's gonna go in there. So you insert the cabling through and then now we'll see that this actually fits. And then the next step will be to slide this washer on and put the wing nut on to secure the vent hole mount, which I will do now. Okay, so I have uh, put the washer and the wing nut uh, through the wire and connected it to the back end of the vent hole mount. 
I just wanted to show you that in the last one, I was a little concerned because now that I removed the vent hole sort of uh, grommet, I guess that comes with it, there's a little bit of wiggle room here. You can kind of hear it. Now, I haven't tightened it on the other side. I was concerned that maybe that wouldn't work out so well. Uh, but as you'll see in a moment, uh, this wing nut washer thing tightens it up really well and makes it pretty secure. I guess we'll see over time with vibrations of being smacked with sticks. All right, so that is now secure, tightened up there on the inside, not wiggling, not going anywhere. Again, I guess we'll see over time. Another thing to keep in mind is where the drum is gonna be hanging from. So I have a, the suspension mounts that come with the Thomas, so I can choose wherever, but if yours is mounted to the shell, you can't choose that, so you need to pay attention to where it is. Um, and when you put the mic in here, if it's at a 45 degree angle, you kind of want to make sure you're hitting, if it's where I am now, up in this area of the drum. So uh, just pay attention to that as well, as where you choose to put the mic versus where the tom mount is. Um, and so now I need to mount this guy onto one of the lug screws I have to pick where that's going to go. And then, like I mentioned before, I'm not going to have this mic at least at a 90 degree angle. I want to put it at more of a 45 degree angle to the drum head. So the nice thing is you just take one of the supplied Allen wrenches and then just loosen this right here. Easier said than done with one hand uh, and then change the angle, which you'll see in a minute. Okay, now it's at a little bit more of a 45, I don't know, 30. I didn't bust out the protractor. I just kind of eyeballed the angle. Uh, so when it sits in the drum like this, it'll be angled towards the drum head. Uh, and then, like I mentioned before, I have to figure out where you're going to hang the drum from on its stand. And then, based on that, decide which lug you're going to attach the mic to. So on these Star Classics, uh, the mount, again, you can put it wherever. Um, and like I mentioned before, I have removed the badge here. So there's these two little holes. So I'm actually gonna mount it from that side, which will help hide those just a little bit. So knowing that it's gonna mount from here, which means I'm probably gonna be hitting, you know, if the mount, if, uh, <laughs> if the top mount is here, I'm most likely going to be hitting from here on up. Uh, you know, ideally everything's right here, but let's face it. Uh, so here on up. So I'm going to put the mic down on this side somewhat pointing towards where the batter area on the head is going to be. So to do that, I'm just going to take a screwdriver and I haven't exactly decided. It's either going to go in this one or this one. Uh, and I loosen the lug screw that's here and mount this to it, and then I'll go through the rest of it. All right, so I decided to mount it here. So I've removed the lug screw, which is here, and this is what you, this side you mount flush to the shell uh, so that this side is free to accept the um, mount for the microphone. So it, the kit comes with two washers uh, with no real instruction uh, where to put them. They're just rubber isolation washers. Uh, but what makes the most sense to me is to put one on this side against the shell and then put another one in here where the lug screw goes just to add extra isolation. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I have the internal mount over the lug screw. I don't have it totally cinched down yet because I might wanna wiggle it around a little bit. Uh, and then how it mounts is these screws slide out, this goes into here, and then the screws go through those holes. So here's somewhere where Mr. Randall May, who seems like the kind of guy who overthinks everything, maybe could have thought this through a little bit more uh, because the mic needs to go up and down like this. If, so it's difficult to get to this bottom hole. If he put these things on the side, which I don't see any reason why he couldn't have, it'd be a little easier to get to. Now, yes, I could rotate this so the holes are on the side, but then my microphone is facing the shell, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so I'm gonna tighten that down and then put these in here, but I found out last time it's much easier to connect 
the ends of the wires to the mic connections uh, before you mount it to the side. These are labeled two, three, and I guess you can just assume this is one. This is probably not gonna come through on the video. Maybe some of you have better eyes than I do, but in here, these are barely labeled. One is labeled one, the other says three, and the other says G, which I'm guessing is ground. I'm not an electrical engineer. Um, and uh, I hooked those up in accordance that way uh, with this drum, and I did test it, and so that is the correct way to do it. So just uh, get out your magnifying glass if you need to. So I'm going to connect those cables and they just slide right on there. It looks weird if you're used to, you know, a mic cable that already has these things with a mount around them, but they're just individual uh, little connectors that slide down over the pole of each mic connector. Okay, so I connected the, the uh, connections, connected the connections, makes sense. Um, and then I'm gonna slide this in here. Now, if I do this, Got to think a little bit about cable management. This might end up here uh, banging or muting or buzzing against the drum head. Uh, so I'm just going to reconfigure it a little bit like this. So that's down here. And like I said, it does come with zip ties. That you can clean them up, but uh, I think this will work pretty well. So this is sliding in here like this. You can kind of see the screw hole on the mount line up through the hole there. Um, and then that's the angle of my mic to the drum head. I'm kind of guessing on this. I know some people are like, no, it needs to be straight on it. No, it needs to be 45 degrees. No, it needs, so this is a little hit or miss on my part. Uh, I generally angle the top mics when I'm making from the top. So I'm just mimicking that in the bottom. Of course, the bummer is if I don't like it, I gotta pull the head off uh, to change it, but oh well. Uh, and then these screws, this mount here in the top and the bottom, what's like I mentioned before, is a giant pin and a patootie. Uh, and it may even be easier to take the other head off to reach this bottom screw, especially now that I have this cable running through that way. But I will get those cinched up and then hit the next steps. Okay, there we are. Uh, I did, once I got it fixed, decided I wanted uh, to change the angle of the mic a little bit. So I just uh, did that before I put the head on. Now, you know, it is pretty close, right, to the head. Um, so that's awfully close miking. Uh, so we're gonna see what that sounds like. I will do a sound test with these once I get the installation done. So the only thing left to do is to throw the head on it and put the mount back on. And then that is tom number two, ready to go. Here's the mount on the outside. Notice you still get space to vent so you don't lose air venting uh, possibilities. Uh, and then that's where the mic connects. So here's a addendum. So right now I'm working on the eight inch tom, my eight and my 10. I haven't quite decided on the 10 yet, but on the eight I decided because it is so tiny, couple of things I had to do to accommodate. So I actually mounted the vent hole at an angle because I was thinking if it's straight down like this, there's not gonna be enough room to get a mic cable between the rim of the bottom hoop here and you know plugged in. Uh, I may even have to take it to a 90 degree angle, but I'm thinking this uh, angle here should work pretty well. And then also because, you know, oddly enough, small drums have less space, um, I decided to mount the microphone on a bottom lug screw instead of here at the top and just keep it at a 90 de degree angle pointing straight up at the top of the drum. So I have yet to decide if I'm going to take the same approach in the 10 inch or not. Oh, one other thing I found, and if you've done this occasionally on your own, if you want to be really anal about things and if you're installing internal mics, you probably do, uh, you might just want to go around and check um, all of your connections here, maybe before you put the microphone in there. Um, I'll just slide it out because I haven't really connected it yet. Um, and just make sure that all of these guys are nice and snug because you will be surprised to find that they're not. You don't have to like crank them down and, you know, death grip or anything. Let's give them a nice little 
twist, like every single one of these could use just a little bit of tightening. So yours probably do too. Another slight update on floor tom. I'm putting in the sixes actually in the two floor toms. And again, it's gonna be pretty close to the batter head, but I tested it as far as it looks like it might touch. I, I don't think it's going to. Uh, because if I put it at the bottom, that would have been way too far down. But another thing here, where the vent hole is, uh, is right over the tom mount. So if I point it down, uh, you'll never be able to plug in. So that's another one I gotta put sideways. Okay, I've just finished putting the last one in the toms. Uh, some downsides to having six toms is uh, when you do this, there's a lot of toms to work on. Anyway, just finished up and a couple last thoughts. Hi. A few things that I wish were easier. Um, so particularly installing these guys right here. Uh, I mean, they're machined okay, but several of them felt like I was cross-threading as I put them in because uh, they don't go in really smooth. And I suppose I might have cross-threaded one or two. Like I mentioned before, having the other one of these on the other side here is, I don't know what kind of look that's going to be, but um, is really hard to get to and a pain in the patootie, as I said earlier. Uh, also, sliding these connectors on uh, is harder than I thought. And I finally ended up utilizing this little guy to gently grab them and get a little more leverage to push on. And they pushed on a lot further than I could get with my fingers. So hopefully the other ones that I didn't do that with uh, are going to be just fine. Um, and then the big thing for me is I really wish that with my drums, I could put the microphones a little further into, a little deeper down into the shell, particularly for these floor toms. So we're going to see what that sounds like. Again, if you had drums that do not have as small a lugs so that the screws are not so close together, I mean, um, that's pretty close and they don't go further in, you know, they're pretty close to the edge here. So depending on your drums, you may be able to get them in further as well. So I guess the main thing is your mic location as far as how down it goes into the drum is very, very dependent on what kind of lugs you've got. Okay, I'm gonna slap this back together.